Today I'll show you a few different ways you can auto-translate the titles and descriptions of your YouTube videos, which can help to maximize your reach and grow your international audience. If you weren't already aware, you can go into a video and then look under subtitles to view the subtitle information, as well as translations into other languages. You will of course want to choose the native language of your videos. I recommend setting this in your upload defaults and also applying it to all of your current videos. YouTube will automatically create captions for your video and translate them into other languages, but you can go the extra step and use translated titles and descriptions to appear in international search and suggestions. By looking in your YouTube analytics, you can see what languages your viewers speak. Most of this traffic may be coming from people who speak your native language, but you can see if there are other audiences who speak a different language. You need not translate your titles and descriptions for every language offered, just go with the top results for now and add more later if you like. It may not be necessary to translate all of your videos. It would be best to start with your most viewed videos, followed by the videos that are getting the most real-time views. Then maybe find your best performing recent videos, and then decide if it's worth it to translate anything else besides that. Translating your titles and descriptions could help, but it might not be easily measurable until you've had some time to gather data on how it impacted your channel. I'll also mention that auto-translation is not always correct. However, it's better than nothing. You'll likely get a lot of comments about how silly your translation sounds. Not only is this an opportunity to improve the translation, but it will also give you confirmation that the translations are giving you additional exposure. In order to truly appreciate how much time it takes to translate a lot of videos, let's do one manually. I'll choose a video, add a few of the top languages my viewers speak, and then copy and paste the text into Google Translate. When I do this with one video in one language and I speed it up, it doesn't seem like it takes very long. Big deal, Aaron. But if I were to add the remaining languages and then repeat that for the hundreds of videos on my channel, this is a project that would take up several days. Even if you only have a dozen videos, automating the work is better than doing it yourself. It's boring and tedious, and you will waste a lot of time making mistakes. Let's see how I can use Microsoft Power Automate to create a flow that can do these same actions for me while I take a break, exercise, go for some water, use the bathroom, or multitask. This is a free application that is built into Windows 11 and can be added to Windows 10. In separate tabs, I will open five videos that I will process together. The more videos you can process, the more efficient this process will be. However, there is always a risk that something may go wrong in your browser or in the automation. So I'd limit the batches to a reasonable number if you aren't confident that the flow will run without any snags. Try to pick videos that do not already have translated titles or descriptions for this example. This automation requires two different flows since there are two basic tasks. It's possible I could combine these flows into a single task. I might do that at some point to adapt it from batch processing multiple videos to just a single video. The first task will add the top languages to my video. Not only do I not have to perform the clicks and mouse movements to add these, I also don't have to remember which languages I need to add. I'll need to run this for each video, but I could adapt the flow to repeat this on multiple videos. Adding a bit of human control gives you more supervision over the process in case something goes wrong. Next, I'll pick a language and click on Add for each video. By using the keyboard shortcut of Control plus Tab, I can keep the mouse in the same position and click to make short work of this. This is also something that could be automated. Now I'll open the second flow, which will automate the copy and pasting to and from Google Translate. I'll need to set the loop to the number of videos I want to process. After translating the text, the flow will clear the fields, publish the translation, switch to the next tab, and repeat the process until it is complete. For the most part, I can leave this one unattended and it will get the job done, but there are occasionally snags which will mess up the flow, so just be aware of what it's doing. I can't guarantee you won't end up with a mistranslated video here and there, but that won't affect the title and descriptions for your native language. Plus, the same risk for mistakes is there even if you do this work manually. Now I'll show you how I set up this flow so you can reproduce it. Please note that you'll need to customize your mouse movements since we'll likely have different display dimensions and resolutions. I'm also using multiple displays so I can have Power Automate on one display and my apps on the other. I have a main flow and several subflows. Subflows just break the automation into parts that are easier to manage and control. You can see each language is represented by a subflow and those trigger in sequence. Each subflow is quite similar, though the first two subflows have slightly different mouse actions because after they trigger the button they are targeting, it moves down the page. 
Some videos may have translations already added. You may need to adjust the flow to account for those, since the flow I created moves the mouse to specific coordinates. I have a duplicate of this flow which has been adapted to a different page layout. And let me say that I'm not an expert at this application by any means, and there could be a better way to do this. But if anything, this demonstrates that even someone with limited experience can benefit from automation. Basically, I just want to wait five seconds to give myself enough time to click on the Add Language button. Then the automation starts by sending the first four letters of the language I want to add to highlight it in the list. Next, I wait for 0.5 seconds. These wait periods are essential from keeping your flow from getting ahead of the browser. You can adjust these if you need to. The next step is to trigger the return key to choose the selected language. Another half second pause and then two left clicks to activate the add language button to ready it for the next subflow. The second subflow repeats the first few steps of selecting the correct language and adding it, but this time adding the language moves the button down. So I have added a mouse movement relative to the current mouse position before I trigger a left click on the button. You can copy and paste these actions if you like. The remaining subflows are all identical. They select the correct language and then move the mouse down and click the add language button. This time they move a bit more than the second subflow to account for the button moving down the page. Once the languages have been added, the flow ends. The next flow is a loop with some subflows in it. A loop will repeat an automation as many times as you like. I'll need to move the browser windows next to each other so that I can see the YouTube videos and Google Translate simultaneously. Again, you may need to modify the mouse movements to match your own displays. Next, I'll pick a language and click on Add for each video. I'll use that keyboard shortcut of Control-Tab. Now that everything is set up correctly, I can go through the steps in the flow. First, I'll set the loop value to the number of videos I'm processing. Next, the flow begins with a wait of three seconds, so I have time to click on the YouTube video browser window. This designates the browser as the active window, which is a reference point for the mouse movements. After that, the loop will run the subflows within. The copy and paste translations flow will move the mouse to the correct fields and copy and paste the text, with Control A to select the entire field Control c to copy, and Control v to paste. This looks like a lot of steps, but many of them just repeat and can be duplicated by copying and pasting. I could tidy this up and make it into more subflows, but this is good enough for me. I won't go through each step individually, but I will scroll through the list so you can see the steps in this flow. I have added a bit of delay to the mouse clicks and keystrokes, and do pay attention to which mouse movements are relative to the active window or the screen. The next subflow will move the mouse and click on the Google Translate browser window to activate it. Then it will page up a couple of times to return to the top of the page because translating likely scrolled it down. After that, I'll select all and then backspace to clear the text input field so that it's ready for the next translation. I've kept the control key pressed for most of the flow to make it easier to activate the keyboard shortcuts. So here is where I'll release it. If you happen to have a key press like control in your workflow and you end the flow before the release command is triggered, you may need to press the key once to disengage it. The third subflow will move the mouse back to the YouTube browser window and click on the Publish button. And the final subflow will control tab to the next video so the flow can repeat until the loop is complete. Now that you've built your flow, you will need to test it, probably quite a few times, to ensure it's working correctly. If something is not working, try disabling subflows and run the flow without them to narrow down which step is not working correctly. Also, temporarily changing the mouse movements from instant to high-speed animation can help slow down the flow so you can see if the mouse is going to the wrong location. While you can set up an abort shortcut, I can't ever seem to get it to work. Control-Alt-Delete will lock up your system, and that should trigger an error in the flow, which will stop it. Also, some languages require more character than others, so you may find that a translation exceeds the number of characters you can add. In this case, you'll need to abort the flow and adjust the loop to the correct value for the remainder of the videos. If your flow breaks midway during adding the languages, you'll need to disable the languages that have already been added and resume the flow. If you get discouraged, just keep in mind that most of the work designing the flow has been done for you, and all you need to do is fit it into your computer. And once you're done, you'll be able to build your own flows for other applications, saving yourself hours, months, or maybe even years of your time. Hopefully, with some trial and error, you've built a couple of flows that work. Now let's use them to translate some videos. If you want to try to make the flow run even faster, you can tweak the wait periods I chose and the run delay. I find 50 milliseconds makes it a bit faster to execute, but any faster than that and the flow is likely to get ahead of the browser. 
As you can see, this is so much better than doing this kind of stuff manually. Those days of grinding through tedious work are over. Just like copy and paste commands allowed us to quickly process large volumes of text, automation is revolutionizing how we complete repetitive tasks. If what I showed you in Power Automate is over your head or too much to deal with, and you can throw some money at the problem, you can auto-translate your titles and descriptions using a legend-level TubeBuddy subscription. TubeBuddy is a browser plugin that can automate a lot of useful YouTube tasks. As you can see, it's showing me data about the top 10 languages spoken by my channel's audience. TubeBuddy is definitely more convenient than using Power Automate, but Power Automate is free and you can use it to batch translate videos. Both are better options than wasting your time translating this stuff manually. I'll put links to these products in the description of this video. Well, there you have it. You can now translate your video titles and descriptions with the goal of reaching a wider audience. I recommend that you add translations into your upload workflow or do it in weekly or monthly batches so that you don't have to spend a lot of time catching up. Please give this a try and let me know in the comments what you did with your time while automation was doing this task for you. If you enjoy what I do here on this channel, subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss my new videos. Thanks for watching and stay creative.